Hello, welcome to Indie Film World, where nothing ever goes right, but you keep going anyway. Hey, filmmakers, thank you for being here. Uh, I am uh, excited to bring you today's guest, Leah Saboli. If you have, um, I'm sorry, this I'm all thrown off because we didn't have our intro videos, so I'm trying to catch up to where I need to be right now. Uh, what do we need? Uh, I want to make sure that we uh, tell us who you are in the chat. Uh, where you're from, what do you do in the biz? We want to know who's here. Um, if you're new to Black Magic Collective, we are a collective of film and TV professionals. We have events, we have initiatives, we have all kinds of things um, all the time to help filmmakers in their careers. So please, if you aren't a member, just sign up at blackmagiccollective.com. It is free. Uh, Black Magic Collective Film Festival is now accepting up to 20 minute submissions. And if you are a member, you can get a $5 uh, a code that gets you to be able to submit for five bucks. And thank you to our sponsor, uh, Black Magic Design. Thank you for always taking care, such good care of us and to Sigma um, for being here with us this year. If you have questions along the way for Leah or the filmmakers that we'll talk to, please put it in the comment box. We're going to try to get to all of those along the way. Um, and here we are today, Black Magic Collective's uh, micro budget series part two crowdfunding. I mean, if you're current, are you currently writing your show piece or ready to go into production, but don't have a clue how to get it financed? Uh, have you been thinking about crowdfunding, but uh, maybe you don't know where to start, or maybe you tried it before and it didn't go well? Today, Leah is going to help fix all of that. Uh, she helped raise millions of dollars across crowdfunding platforms. And she is also an actor and producer herself. So she understands what it's like to be a content creator who needs to get your stuff made and having a hard time getting it made. She's going to answer all those questions. So I'm going to bring you up uh, Leah Savoli, who's an actor producer. And uh, some of her clients have included Sean Astin, Jim Beaver, Mark, uh, Mark Marshall, Jim Michaels, so many more. She's helped them all raise money. So let's hear what she's got to say. Leah, thank you for being here. Oh, hi, Jen. Thanks for having me. Hi. Um, I'm glad you're here now. You can take over because I don't have it together this morning, apparently. Um, so I, let's just, I guess, let's set up, set the stage for crowdfunding. Um, it's the very basics, I guess. Somebody who's, everybody, I think everybody knows what crowdfunding is, but what would you say to somebody who's just like, just thinking about it? It's your first time meeting them. What is sort of the first things you start with? Mm. One of the first things we're going to start with is having a realistic goal, like being realistic, right? Um, you know, a lot of people, I think, have this notion that crowdfunding is something that, hey, I've got a good idea. I fill down all the, you know, all the little blank spots on the Kickstarter page or whatever. I did what they told me to do. And then I put it up there and boom, it's going to magically get funded just like that. It doesn't and work that way. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there is the rare, like, you know, what was it? That grilled cheese sandwich or something. But even then, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, you know. And I think that's part of it is that when you see it, when you see a successful crowdfunding campaign and things are just happening and content's happening and dollars are flowing in and milestones are being made. What you're not seeing is 99% chance that that team has been working for weeks, if not months behind the scenes, either with someone like me or their team and putting these things together. You're not popping out content and ideas I mean, you are, but you're not popping out content ideas just spontaneously during your campaign. These things are planned. These things, it's a pre-production, just like with your film. I think that's probably the most important piece to get across to filmmakers is that crowdfunding is a production in and of itself and as such has phases such as pre-production, such as production, such as post-production. And it takes all of those pieces running smoothly to make a successful campaign happen. It is a lot of work. Um, I think that most filmmakers, if they do it, they tend to give up um, at some point and they just go, well, this is, you know, I made a hundred bucks. Great. Uh, so let's talk about the pre-production of it then. What are some of the things that filmmakers should know when they're starting to set up their crowdfunding? Uh-oh, did I die? Am I gone? Oh, there you are. 
What? Jen, are you there? Okay. What? I can hear you again. What? I'm sorry. I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. And then there was all this like video game music I was hearing. It was strange. Um, it's also very yes, strange I, I, that we're having all these weird tech problems this morning. It's like powering through powering through uh okay <laughs> it's all good but i i heard what you said i heard i no, i heard what you said i heard you say um you know a lot of filmmakers give up and the statistics out there is 50 percent of all crowdfunding campaigns actually fail um 50 wow. percent. yeah and I, I i don't know all the stats today but i know at one point there were forty thousand new projects just on kickstarter alone every day um, so there's, it's saturation, you know, people do give up. And that's another thing that I teach my clients during our campaign phase is communication and engagement with those that are pledging, those that may pledge, those that are thinking about pledging because so many people give up. If you come across a campaign and you're not able to tell that they're actively updating it, they're actively putting out new rewards or putting out campaign updates or sharing new content, you may pass them by because if it doesn't look like there's any activity happening, you may think this is just another filmmaker who put up a crowdfunding campaign and gave up. So backer communications, gratitude shout outs, daily updates, things like that are the key pieces to working with me as far as these are the things that I found that have worked to keep people engaged. You, you know, this is a calling card, you know, this is a calling card, not just for this project, but for every project you're going to do. And this is in many ways how independent filmmakers connect with, team up with, and align with bigger investors and other producers that they're going to collaborate down the line because people see how much gusto, effort, planning, tenacity and organization and just freaking insanity you were willing to put up with <laughs> and get done for the 30, you know, 30 days of your crowdfunding campaign. Yeah. So let's talk uh pre-production. So a lot of it when you're getting people started, is it a lot of just finding goals and sort of setting social media calendars? Are there things that like you specifically want to make sure filmmakers are doing before they ever hit launch? Yes, absolutely. There's a lot, a lot of things. Um, like you said, one of them is social media calendar planning um, and not just social media calendar planning, but the calendar in general. So what, what I will normally have us start working on is a 30 day calendar, you know, day one through 30. And we will ask, you know, questions every day, you know, is there new content happening today? Is there a new update happening today? Do we have a new backer reward we're talking about today? Is there a press interview happening today? And the ideal is that when you look at this calendar with all these boxes, with all these questions for each day, that before we hit launch, we're hoping that at least one box on every day has some sort of piece plugged in. Now, it's very fluid. Crowdfunding is very fluid and spontaneous, and these pieces can change. But when we look at the calendar, we want to see, we want to know what we're doing. We want to know that on week three, day 23, is when we're going to announce this great big perk that we've been holding on to that we want people to know about. These things are already in place. Um, something else that I always insist on my clients doing is even just little milestone videos. You know, you see when people hit milestones on their crowdfunding campaign, they put something fun out. Well, guess what? I'm having my clients do that as part of pre-production. They're getting together one day. They're bringing three or four different tops so that they can change their look and make it look like it's a different day. And then you're going, hey, everybody, we hit $5,000 today. Then you're going to change your outfit. Hey, we hit $10,000 today. And you're going to have all these videos already edit it and logged in in private mode on your YouTube. And it looks spontaneous, but th these That's are things that are really planned. Smart. Yeah. yeah. I, even the, the, same even the fact that you, well, so even the fact that you've planned out, like here's something you can do every day. Cause it, yes. it seems overwhelming in the pre-production part, but when you're in the middle of this crowdfunding, you don't want to have to think about anything. You want to be able to just go, what there's four things we can do. Which one are we doing today? That's great. I love that. Exactly. And, and you don't want to even worry about having to edit things either. Right. Because chances are someone on your team is stuck with the content editing. If you're lucky enough to have the budget to bring in another editor to work on that. Um, but you want to have these things edited as well. So even things like that, they're already edited, ready to go. Um, and I also encourage my clients to find some sort of through line, right? So you're going to meet a couple clients today, um, you know, just thinking of Demon Hunter, and I'll have Tim elaborate more on what they did for like Fridays. You know, they they had a uh, Monster Monday where they revealed a 
a certain monster, but only gave little bits of tidbits. And then you found out later in the week what monster was being talked about. And these are things that were shot, you know, weeks before the campaign launched and edited and ready to go so that we know that's the content we're putting out because it's content is key. If you're not talking about your campaign, no one else is either. And in this day and age, everyone's aware of algorithms. Everyone's aware that algorithms can be your friend or they can be your enemy. And you have got to get the algorithms to work for you. So as you're planning that pre-production phase, you're thinking of like, okay, for the platform in general, most platforms work on a few things. Campaign updates are part of the algorithm. Pledges are part of the algorithm. If you're on a platform that allows comments from the backers in your team. Um, Kickstarter allows that. That is part of the algorithms. If you're on a platform that allows you to upload more content videos and photos like Indiegogo has in their gallery, that's part of the algorithm. And these are things that the platforms may not really mention in their instructions on how to use the platforms. But if you're hitting these three, four points on a daily basis, Basis or with the campaign updates, maybe every three days, you're working that algorithm to your advantage. Um, same thing with your social media platform. So in that pre-production phase, we're talking about, okay, I want my clients posting five times a day on Facebook, five times a day. That's breakfast, lunch, late afternoon, dinner, and bedtime. And there are multiple reasons for that. One being time zones. You know people in multiple time zones. The other one being algorithms and when people check their social media. If they're in a job where they can't check till after work hours and you're only posting during work hours, they're never going to see what you're posting. So when you hit that sweet spot and you have a couple friends and family members start to complain, now we know we're doing something good. When people start going, oh, really, Leah, you're posting again. Now you know you've hit that sweet spot. Um, and it's funny. I have a story I love to tell about that because a lot of people, when they hear me say you're going going to be posting on Facebook five times a day. And by Facebook, I mean your personal Facebook page, not the project Facebook page, because the algorithms don't work over there unless you're putting in advertising dollars. So when I'm talking about Facebook, I'm talking about your personal Facebook pages. That's next to email. Facebook, personal Facebook pages is the most important. Um, hold, hold that thought. Email is part of our pre-production phase. One of the things I'm gonna have you do is draft a minimum of 100 personal emails that are ready to go before you even hit that launch button. And this is not a MailChimp, this is not a Yahoo Groups, this is not a mass mailing. This is Jen, hey, wow. I saw that you just had this great panel last week. Oh, it was so interesting. Thanks so much, guess what I'm up to. And then you go into your crowdfunding thing. And I, I have templates that I sell or give to my clients and whatnot. Um, but so even just getting those 100 emails written before you hit launch is a lot of work. And I'm talking, you know, if your kindergartner teacher is still alive, Mrs. Jones, wow, I heard you finally retired. Guess what I'm doing? I'm making a movie, you know? And and it's funny, I've, I've noticed a lot of times, and, and some of you listening may have noticed this if you've crowdfunded before, um, Yes, your industry friends are supportive. Yes, your collaborators are supportive. But sometimes it's those friends that you went to elementary school with, middle school, high school with that have completely different lives and completely different cities that are so happy and supportive that they're the ones that are dropping a hundred, five hundred thousand dollars because you know they've got nine to five jobs and, and they're not independent filmmakers. Um, so it's 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 an emotional roller coaster. Input on, on that, like most of. The last few times we've crowdfunded, every time we had a big check, like a thousand dollars or more, was always from a lawyer, but our producers old from our producers' old life. Yes, yes, so yes. People your from friend. your old <laughs> lives. Yes. People from your old lives are the ones that end up surprising you and shocking you. Um, and maybe it's just because hmm, some of your some of your collaborators are a little jaded or they've got their own crowdfunding campaign they're getting ready for themselves. And it's those friends that are in different industries who are just here to support you and cheer lead you on. And it's, it's such an emotional journey, but I think in the end, most, well, I guess most people that are successful <laughs> will say that it was worth it. But if you're working with me, chances are you're going to be successful. <laughs>
Um, since we're running, running low on time, I want to do two things. One, I'm going to do a quick recap for people who maybe just turned in, tuned in. Um, import pre-production for crowdfunding, yes. important scheduling it all, having hopefully having a, some kind of manager with you, cheerleader slash manager slash expert like Leah with yes. you to help you along the way, important. Um, and then once we're in production, it is a team yeah. sport. It is not yes. you doing this by yourself. You've got to, before you even get there, you've got to make sure your team is on board. Um, now, one of the questions that we get a lot, I'm sure you get a lot, Leah, and it's actually just come up from uh, Manchester here. Uh, are there certain platforms that are better for documentary documentaries over dramas or maybe completion funding for pre-production? Do you want to do a quick, like, you know, sure. the 60 second pitch on each platform from your experience? Sure. Ab absolutely. From my experience, you know, at the end of the day, the platform doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's your team, your tenacity, how much you've prepared um and how how willing how far you're willing to go you know not to give up for those 30 days because you're being taken out of your uh comfort zone you know you're asked for money no but it's never easy to ask for money um but as far as the platforms go i've worked on just about all of them and it depends you know kickstarter I still think Kickstarter is the king of kings. You know, they're they're the best platform out there. They have the best back end. They have the most things that you can work for. Um, and the chances are likely that they, you know, the most traffic is happening on that platform. Now, whether or not you're going to get that platform, that traffic is another story. On the other side of things, you've got Seed and Spark, and I love Seed and Spark. Both of my clients that you're going to meet today both had successful campaigns on Seed and Spark. Seed and Spark is more hands on because they're newer, they're younger, they're hungry, they're run by women, they're all about diversity and inclusion, and they really get their hands on the projects. Um, both of my clients, I believe, can attest to that today, that both of them got, you know, some sort of special feature or some sort of special tweet or some sort of special placement on the Seed and Spark page, not because they were working with me and Seed and Spark was like, oh, this is Leah's client, but because they were doing all of the things necessary to catch the attention of the platform. You're well, never going to get that kind of attention somewhere else. Well, and the good news is too, Seed and Spark has recently announced that there's no more fees for creators, which is huge. Uh, amazing, amazing. And their fees were, were smaller to begin with. So to answer the question, which one's better for documentaries versus drama? I don't necessarily have something that I'm pulling from that. But if you have a project that is perhaps more on, you know, spotlighting diversity and inclusion, um, I would look at Seed and Spark because you can also work with guests, um, uh, which are called the wish list on Seed and Spark, which is a feature that none of the other platforms have, which is basically in-kind donations. So as you're crowdfunding, people can also give some sort of in-kind donation that also ticks down. Indiegogo, I've had successful campaigns. I've had about a dozen successful campaigns on Indiegogo. They're not my favorite platform for a number of reasons, but one of the main reasons for me is even though people think that the get whatever you get model is a good model, I have found that sometimes it works against you because let's say you've set your goal at $12,000. And if you're on Kickstarter, you need to get that 12 or you ain't getting nothing. If you're on Seed and Spark, you need to get 80% of that 12 or you're not getting anything. Now on Indiegogo, you raise $9,000, everybody's going to go, yay, you raised $9,000. But if you're over on one of the other platforms and you're at $9,000, everybody's going to go, crap, we need to get them to the actual, you know, the actual goalposts. So I have found that having that urgency really, really does help and come into play. Um, so chances are, if you're working with me, we're either going to be on Seed and Spark or Kickstarter, but all of the platforms out there do have their positives and benefits. But like I said, at the end of the day, the platform doesn't matter. It's you and your team and, you know, how well you did your pre-production and how well your production itself is going to go. I love it. Um, since we are at 1120, I want to bring in some filmmakers who've worked with you for some case studies to talk about <laughs> how they were successful, what worked, what they hated, what they loved. Uh, so, Kayla, can you bring up Linnea and Tim, please? Welcome. Hello. Hi. Um, so, Leah, oh, do you want to um, so set up something to kick us off here? Absolutely. These two faces you're seeing are two of my very successful clients. 
Um, Tim O'Leary crowdfunded on Seed and Spark in 2019 <laughs> for his recently premiered and successful web series, Demon Hunter. Tim is the creator, writer, producer, director, and probably a bunch of other titles I'm forgetting. Um, and over in this corner, we have Linnea Love of Lady Love Productions in the house and Linnea successfully found in 2021 post uh oh she froze again oh no Leah Oh, so Leah froze. It wasn't me this time well no. then I will talk to you guys until we get Leah back I thought it was me um, well Let's start with you, Alina, if you don't mind. Tell us just a quick bit about like the short log line about your project and why why you think you were successful. The, like maybe the main reason you thought you were successful in doing this. Ooh, um, short log line. You know, a a mentally challenged detective. You know, is taking on a serious case, um, and she's trying to battle her demons at the same time. And one of the reasons why I feel like I was successful. Is because of Leah. <laughs> because <laughs> Leah was all that I had. I, I, didn't, I didn't have a team. Um, okay. It was just me. That's rough. Unfortunately, it was. Can we asked you how much you needed. How much were you asking to raise in the beginning? <sighs> um, initially, when I first talked to Leah, it was thirty three thousand. We had our conversation, and I told her what my situation was, and that it would just be me. She's like, I think we need to take that down. So we went to twenty two thousand, and I was That's able. Still to a lofty goal. It's still, especially by myself. So yeah. she, she can tell you, oh, I went crazy for 30 days. Yes. Um, Tim, really quick, same for you. Log line and um, most successful part. And what was your goal? Uh, the goal was, um, I think it was about 30, it was 36,000. And we ended up getting over 80%. So we raised over 30K. Um, nice. I did have a team, which uh, Lenny, let me tell you, made it way easier. <laughs> I'm so impressed that you did that by yourself. That's like the most incredible thing I've ever heard. Um, but yeah, and we were, you know, we, we were just trying to figure out how to raise money for a show that uh, was about a diverse group of queer friends who uh, kill demons and also sometimes sleep with them. So, uh, you know, it's figuring out, like, We're yeah, best that's friends pretty, pretty much the log line. Yeah. It's great. yeah, I think it was like um, two, uh, two best friends who are mediums and martial artists uh, hunt demons in L.A. and sometimes sleep with them, too. Shrug. Um, <laughs> and and uh, so obviously it's like a horror action comedy. Very silly, very tongue in cheek, but, you know, kind of a bizarre premise. And we were like, OK, well, we have that's a lot of information to try to get to people. But fortunately, we had Leah, who I always referred to as the most lovable drill sergeant that I've ever met. Um, and she just uh, kept us on task and kept us going. And it is, I, I always tell people, it is exclusively because we hired Leah that we were able to actually get what we needed to get. Um, and particularly when you guys were talking about the pre-production of the campaign, that's really where uh, the foundation was created. So we were able, like what Leah was saying, we were able to sort of brainstorm and think about fun ways to constantly be doing the updates um, so that we're like, okay, we have to introduce people to who we are. We have to introduce them to our main cast. We have to introduce them to this wacky premise of a show. How are we going to get all of that information in fun, digestible ways with, you know, quick updates? And yeah, it was really, you know, I've, I've, when I, whenever I'm dealing with filmmakers who always come to me about crowdfunding, I always try to get them to go to Leah because I think at the very least, I, every time I've done it, I've had a team. I've had other producers, actors, whoever is supposed to be helping. But I think unless you have someone outside of you, mm -hmm. you don't have anybody to be the drill sergeant. So I right. like that you said that. And um, I can already picture the sweetest drill sergeant because I know Leah. She's like, she's never mad. Nope. <laughs> she's always like on it. Right. Um so, Linnea, can you tell us a little bit about what made your project, like what, I know besides Leah, like what do you feel like made your project successful? What were the steps you took that you were like, these were the most important steps I did? Because that's a lot of money you raised and by yourself. Yeah, um, definitely. Leah taught me things in regards to the pre-production, of course, that I never knew because this was my first time doing crowdfunding. Before the crowdfunding, I paid for everything out of pocket for the pre-production for my film and during principal photography. So this was the last component for me. And like she said, 
I hate asking people for money. So it took me a long time to get to the point where I said, I'm going to do this and I need help. And that pre-production and putting everything together was kind of like, it was like, I don't know. It was like having an epiphany of like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's a lot, but it, it helped set me up, especially the calendar. Cause I mm-hmm. told you, I hate social media. And having to be on every day for 30 days, and I still work a full-time job, was the absolute craziest thing that I could ever do. (laughs) So I think that the pre-production for me and working with Leah is what really helped set me up to be successful because she gave me the foundation and I just ran with it. And, I, you know, thank you. Both Tim and Linnea, I'd like to ask, um, and Leah, you can you can speak to all of your, you have some crazy stories of your previous clients and things they did uh, to get over humps. But would you guys say when you saw money coming in the most, was it from after social media posts? Was it after direct emails? What do you feel like was the one thing that helped you the most? Oh, that's a good question. I think I would say probably um, social media posts when we would really kind of roll them out because Leah um, was, was, clear that she was saying when you're doing a campaign, especially when you're campaigning almost exclusively on social media, you want everyone to feel like they're part of this ongoing narrative, like, and people get really invested. So we did have people who were donating several times where they would donate like in the beginning. And then they're like, Oh, they, you know, we would say like, we need to hit our goal of 17,000 because we're, you know, way past the halfway point. And if we don't get this, we're not going to go, ah, we're going to, everyone's going to die. So then uh, people would be like, oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Don't be swear. Sorry. And then they would um, throw in just a, a few, you know, a few more dollars. But, um, but that was really uh, something that, you know, that Leah really helped with. But also, I will say, although I was, resisting it every step of the way those hundred emails in the beginning which were so i don't know why that was so hard for me not not like the act of doing it but just emotionally it was hard for me the idea of emailing a hundred people and i was thinking oh everyone's gonna hate me no one's gonna want to get these emails but um we started off really strong because of those emails and then leah also told us in the beginning before we started the campaign you're going to get a huge crush of donations at first, and then it's going to kind of plateau because that's just the normal life cycle of any campaign. So that's going to happen. Just don't let it make you nervous. Don't freak out. And I was like, yeah, cool. Totally understand. And then the second that it started to plateau, I called Leah. I'm like, Leah, I'm freaking out. It's not what's happening. And then she's like, it's okay. That's what I'm here for. We knew this was mm-hmm. going to happen. This is part of it. And it was very reassuring to have, yeah, Leah's nodding because she remembers that frantic phone call. It was uh, very reassuring to have a, uh, a very experienced hand guiding us the entire way. So it really did take a lot of that tension out. I was still nervous for the entire time, but fortunately, because of Leah, we were able to get it done. Leah, do you remember any specific stories from these, either these two campaigns where you, they had to overcome something? Uh-oh, we, do we not have your sound? I love tech. It's the best ever. <laughs> oh, no. And she <laughs> said, forget that. I'm not telling you. She's, She's the guest of the hour. We keep losing her. Uh, Lenina, would you say the same thing, though, that was social media the biggest, were people most responsive, or was it your emails? Um, it was definitely social media. And I will say that whenever we hit a certain point, I noticed that people will wait until we hit certain points in order to all right, now I'm going to, now I'm going to donate. Cause I, I can see when people were on and, you know, and, and they were peeking around, but like, say, all right. Wait, we- wait, wait, wait. You guys know when we're, when we're stalking your campaigns? Well, some, yeah, some of, it's kind of, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I stalk all the time trying to make decisions on what I want to do about someone. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I hit, you know, I, we hit, oh, we hit 2,500. So then it's like, all right, now I'm gonna put in some money. Like certain times you hit certain plateaus. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I got super, super scared going towards the end because I was like, oh, this is not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus help me. And it just, just let's just say it happened. (laughs) But I had a lot of praying and a lot of cussing and fussing over here. (laughs) I'm like, oh God, this is not gonna happen. So definitely social media. 
you know, we were yeah, all I, I, I'm gonna say I, I I recall both of these moments that Linnea and Tim are talking about. Um Tim, yes, that call, that phone call somewhere week two, two and a half. I mean, he was just, he was, he was done. He was like, wow, this, this is not happening, Leah. And I'm like, no, Tim, remember, this is the part that we talked about and I had to talk him off the edge. And there was a week where I was traveling. So we were doing our group calls and Zooms from a hotel room. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, like he said, he had a team. So when I was in Los Angeles with them, the team was meeting at Tim's apartment regularly. They had, they had whiteboards, they had all kinds of things. Um, but, but that moment of where they all kind of crashed at the same time, where the whole yeah. team was just like this, we're done. We've sent those hundred emails, Leah, we're doing these things, nothing's happening. And it was like, no, you, this, this, this is part of it. You guys just keep going. And I know it's mm-hmm. hard to keep putting yourself out there when you're not even seeing any results all of a sudden, things just start to trickle and you're like, wow, we've hit everybody. And it's that leap of faith to keep going, which is exactly what Linnea is describing as well, because she works a full time job and she and she's a mama. She's got a lot of stuff going on. I know she's busy. And there was a time, Linnea, I want to say I want to say it was like a, a day or two where Linnea went dark on me. <laughs> and I've lost, I've lost a couple clients over the way where they just stop communicating or they just give up or they just let it roll. And there was a mo- moment where I was worried that I'd lost her. And then she had that moment yeah. that she was talking about and she came back stronger than ever and was like, okay, yep, yeah, you know what? I know this person, we're gonna get this person involved. Yep, we're gonna get some more content out. We're gonna showcase this person, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna get all this merch made up. I've got the Providence masks, I'm getting out there. I'm getting people yeah. taking pictures of them. And it was like, she just, she, you, Lydia, you hit this wall where you were like, uh-uh, nope, I am not, I am not going down like this. <laughs> and, and she made it happen. I actually get tears in my eyes hearing that story because I think that that's a filmmaker's life, whether it's crowdfunding, whether it's making your film, whether it's in post-production, whether you're a distribution, it's like, we're constantly like, what the hell are we doing? And why are we doing this? And having to find that new passion inside to keep going, whether it's because you have teammates who are like, you can do it, or you have Leah saying you could do it, or just, you know, in your case going, all right, Jesus. (laughs) I mean, like, Lydia, again, I'm so impressed that you did this by yourself because I know know. exactly that moment you're talking about, but I, like, I had a team of five, so we were able to trade off who is having a meltdown, Mm -hmm. you know, so that if if somebody was like, oh, this person's not doing well, the rest of us would kind of, like, pick up the slack, but who having to do a one-person show, that is so impressive. How many times, Leah, did I say to you, I said... I need several bottles of wine. Like, <laughs> I need, this is what I need in order to keep trying to function because it was, it was so, I, I, I cried. I'm not going to lie. I cried. Like I yeah, cried a lot. Yeah. I cried and yeah. I prayed a lot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, Leah was, you know, she was there, um, you know, for me. And, it, you know, I just appreciate her and, and the experience in itself because I have that experience now. I talk to other pe- other filmmakers about it, um, you know, just so they're not, you can be scared going into it, but if you are really for your project, it's all or nothing, period. Yeah. You can't, you can't yeah. sidestep. If, if this also is a good point I want to bring up because I think sometimes people have an idea for a project and they do it. And I always tell filmmakers, it is going to take you the same amount of work and passion to do the mediocre, the the lukewarm project mm. as it will to do your passion project. And maybe your passion project is harder. Maybe it has bigger locations, more cast, longer. I don't care. It's the same work. So you might as well do that one that you love. Well said. Absolutely. Kayla has a question. She um, basically wanted to know, besides the fear of asking for money, uh, what is the biggest problem you faced in your campaigns and how did you overcome it? The biggest problem? That's a good question. I mean, you had your lulls. We you did know, have, we yeah. Uh, again, like I, I know Leah was talking about this in the intro. There was, it felt insane to me because it was my first time doing a crowdfunding, but in retrospect, the smoothness of it is really apparent because like Leah was saying, we were all brainstorming about what are fun ways for us to have updates that are not only begging people for money, but also hopefully providing a form of entertainment because we are, you know, making a horror comedy show. So that element should be there. 
So we were making little short film videos on, you know, very cheap cameras because we couldn't afford, you know, better cameras. So that's why we were asking for money. Um, and just, you know, like we would have like little things where people are running from an unseen monster and then they would describe it. And then we would have people respond uh, you know, in real time, like what they thought it was. And then the next day we would do a, a fun video with a um, uh, gratuitously shirtless man explaining what the monsters were, <laughs> uh, you know, just to give some of that like kind of cheeky humor. Um, and so, but I guess that probably the problems were, I don't know, Leah, what do you think? What would you say the problems were? That's a hard question. I think, I think the problems with any crowdfunding is, 30 days is a lot longer than you realize oh, yeah, uh, that you have point. to get up and do this every single day. And that, and like you said, trying to find a new way to talk about something and engage someone and trying to find a new way to just do your daily social media posts, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, I like to tell people, I don't care what exactly you post as long as it's a call to action. So if you have a picture of a banana and you're like, here's, my banana because I need some energy because I'm crowdfunding, you know, then that's, that, that's what you post, you know? So yeah. it's, I think it's that, um, what's the word I'm looking for that fatigue. I think fatigue. That some of the toughest yeah. part is that fatigue of trusting. Well, one, you're trusting Leah, who neither one of you had known previously for any reason other than a referral, you know, came on in and you're trusting that when I say I've got your back, that when we've done that initial meeting and we've gone through and we've come up with what we agree is a realistic goal for you, you're now trusting me that I let you do this knowing that we were going to be able to hit this goal and that I've made this commitment to you and you've made this commitment to yourself and the team and there's that fatigue i mean i know it i see the look in your eyes when you're like oh does she really know what she's doing <laughs> is there a monetary amount that you kind of try to get indie filmmakers to cap at or what do you make those decisions on you know, uh, I base my decisions on a couple things. Um, one of the first things I look at is the existing social media. I'm not going to lie. That's one of the first things I look at is the existing social media. And if you're coming to me and in our initial strategy session, you're telling me that you're trying to raise $55,000 and I say how many Twitter followers you have and you say, oh, I don't really go on Twitter much. Okay, well, what about Facebook? Ah, I mean, you know. And so I, I look at that. And then, of course, I look at the size of the team, right? So in Tim's case, there's a team of five. In Linnea's case, it's just Linnea, right? So I look at these numbers. And nine times out of 10, I have people push their goal down to something because we want to hit it. And we want to hit it mm. as quickly as possible so that if we do have time on the clock, we can go above and beyond and get to what I know you really want it. Because let's face it, nobody's coming to me without having – even bigger goals, you know, we all want the 100,000, right? Um, and so I've had teams anywhere up to, you know, $5,000 campaign up to a $250,000 campaign. Um, but it was that team had about 15 people involved, you know, some of them with, with names that you recognize. So I really look at the team, what their social media is already like and how willing they are to learn. Because I will tell you, this is, this is one of my favorite stories. She was, uh, she's an opera singer. She's 72 years old when she came to me, a Philadelphia opera singer. Uh, Josepha Geyer and she had been an opera singer all her life but she never produced her own album so she wanted to crowdfund $30,000 for her album and she was a team of one now mm. not only was she, was she a team of one but she hired me for three months ahead of time just to teach her how to use Facebook and YouTube and Twitter wow. and she set her goal for $30,000 she hit her goal of $30,000, but I will tell you, there was a point where she called me up in tears because her 80-year-old boyfriend, and you guys have heard this story because I love this story, her 80-year-old boyfriend called her up and said, you are embarrassing me. You are begging for money on Facebook. What are you doing? Well, you know what I told her to tell him where to go. And, <laughs> and so we kept up. Guess who put in the last $2,000 that took her over mm -hmm. the hump in the final mm -hmm. week because he saw what she was doing was working. It was not an embarrassment. It was actually admirable and commendable and courageous. And they're now married. 
Hey. I want to point out two, yeah, I love that story. I want to point, uh, point out two things that have, that have kind of been touched on in the last few minutes. One of which is um, we say begging for money, but you're not ever begging for money. You are no. positively sharing what you're doing and asking people to be a part of that. Right. Never do the, please, please, please help us. Nobody yes. wants that. Nobody wants to give to that. Two, um, Leah has worked with a lot of celebrities. And I will tell you from the stories I've heard, it does not matter if it's a famous face. Actors, you always want to go get a famous face to put in on your movie right away because then they're going to help with your crowdfunding. No, they ain't. Nope. And even if they do, that doesn't mean their followers are going to give any money to you. Right. So, uh, Leah, I would love you to kind of touch mm -hmm. on that too. I get this all the time where filmmakers are like, but we have so-and-so. I'm like, mm-hmm. What? Uh-oh. We, we need your, we need your guidance. <laughs> she, she just froze in like her, like her, like, um, she's like, hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about it. I'll come back to you. Well, <laughs> until she gets back, we're um, almost out of time because I am going to be playing our pick of the month here shortly. Oh, she's back. There she is. Yeah. Did you hear my question about celebrity <laughs> by chance? Before you got kicked out of there. I heard the beginning part of your your question. I'd like you to touch I on. Would, I would just, yeah, I'd love you to just touch on like. Celebrity, well, yeah. The, yeah, filmmakers thinking a celebrity is somehow going to help their campaign. There's a couple things I have to say about that. One is I always say, look, you can get the celebrity to tweet about you. Are they going to tweet about you every day? It's one thing to tweet about you. It's another thing to get somebody to retweet that tweet. It's a whole nother thing to get them to open up their wallet. Okay. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing about celebrity, sometimes my projects have a celebrity adjacent involved. Um, just as a quick example, Margaret Cho was a narrator on one of the documentaries we crowdfunded. Now, Margaret wasn't hands-on involved, but her people knew what was going on because she had been hired to be the uh, the narrator when the documentary came to fruition. So what we did and what I recommend people doing is if they have somebody with clout, it doesn't have to be a celebrity, a celebrity, an influencer, somebody with a lot of followers, no one necessarily, Margaret's fans don't necessarily care about the documentary she's narrating, but they care about her. So what mm -hmm. we did was we reached out to her people and said, hey, is Margaret willing to donate anything to the pain? They said, sure, she'll do a bunch of signed comedy DVDs. How many do you need? And we coordinated a Margaret Monday where not only did we announce this was happening and that if you pledged that day, you would get an autographed copy of her, but her people announced it at the same time. We planned ahead of time that we were all putting this out at the same time on the same day. And now her fans care. They don't care necessarily about the Kickstarter documentary, but they want that signed DVD. So mm -hmm. I suggest doing it that way, pulling in something that the fans want. Now, on the flip side of even celebrities have problems, one of my favorite people, one of my favorite clients, Jim Beaver, has 700,000 Twitter followers, you guys. His goal was 30 grand. He just wanted to to produce his own play that he had always wanted to produce and direct. Now, I will say theater is one of the hardest things to crowdfund because unless you're local, you don't get to experience it. 700,000 Twitter followers this man has. A million Facebook likes. It still took us almost three weeks. No. To hit that Stop. Hit. Okay, good. He's <laughs> not, you know, he was not slacking. The very last day, am I, yeah, I'm back. I, he, he was, he, I said he was in the trenches with me, so he was working hard at this, and it still took us almost three weeks to hit this 30. That last week, I was literally at his house looking around going, what else can we put as a perk on the Kickstarter page? He took a salt and pepper shaker off of his windowsill that had been his character Bobby's in the TV show Supernatural, and we put that on the Kickstarter, and it went for $700. Like, we were literally what? pulling pieces of props from his home to, to make this Kickstarter happen. And he, he did end up doubling his goal. Oh, okay. um, we, we are about to have to wrap up, but Shannon um, had a, uh, a comment that I think might be important to talk about. She says, this is so helpful and encouraging. I'm most intimidated about creating my email list. And I think that this email list is so important for filmmakers, yeah. not just for crowdfunding, 
for, for later selling your DVDs when you've made a feature film or for getting mm -hmm. people to come to your festival screening or to whatever it is, to hire you, <laughs> whatever it is. Email lists are important. Leah, how do we get act, uh, filmmakers and actors and everybody over being the, the fear of the email list? <sighs> Guys, you got to do it. You know, I, I started collecting emails in 1999 when I was booking bands, walking around with a clipboard and a pen and paper at the Dragonfly in Hollywood. And mm -hmm. some of those people are still on my email list today. That was back when you used Yahoo groups. So <laughs> when we talk about this email list, I want to make the distinction between I want you to have a MailChimp or a Yahoo or a constant contact or whatever it is that you have where you have all of your people. And those people are most likely going to get an update from you once a week as a mass mailing. But then what I want you to do is I want you to kind of create what's called like a copy of this list. And so as people pledge, I want you to pull them off of that list so they're not being hit up from the campaign mm -hmm. and from yeah. your MailChimp. So that's one thing. But then again, going back to what I believe Shannon's question is that hundred, that hundred emails. I don't know what to tell you other than I need you to make a list of a hundred people. And I don't care if it's your kindergartner teacher or your next door neighbor or your cousin's brother's ex-wife's best friend. If you have their email address, I want you to take it. I have a template I can send you to look at, and I want you to take a few seconds to go look at that person's social media so you can find something to say about them first. That's how you approach the email. It's not about you, Shannon. It's not about any of the filmmakers. It's about that person. When I open that email, I can tell within two seconds that it's not a mass mailing, it's addressed to me. Hey, Leah, I saw that you just did a big family photo shoot with all your nieces and nephews. That looked cute. Well, guess what? Now I have the warm fuzzies because you took the time to see what was up in my life. And we keep it brief and we keep it instructional. Here's how to do it. You know, Let's pretend nobody knows how to crowdfund. Step one, you're going to go to our Seed and Spark page. Step two, you're going to click the follow button. Step three, you're going to hit that blue pledge now button. We spell it out for people so that they can get the most out of it. And I'm telling you those emails work and then what we're going to do is as people pledge we get we take them off the list we thank them we put them over under our thank you list and you may and i'm i know tim and lania both did it those emails are just the first step eventually mm. you're, you're gonna have to start texting and calling these folks as well because if they haven't responded to that email they're gonna get a text message they're gonna get a phone call mm. i'm gonna do two points on that um one, Shannon, especially, I, I don't, I mean, we, we know each other through our filmmaking years here in LA. Uh, you're a kind person who always helps people. You always reach out to people. I think if filmmakers, if you, well, if you think you're going to, like, you shouldn't even be doing it for crowdfunding, but if you even think you're going to be crowdfunding in the future, you better start getting social right now. Uh, yes. Do not wait until you need something because I cannot stand when I get an email from someone yes. who suddenly a Facebook message of like, hey, Jen. On my shit. I'm like, where have you been for the last 10 years? No. Nah. Exactly. Um, Jen, that's an, that's, an, <laughs> that's an amazing point. And it's something, get active. Join the filmmaker groups. Be commenting on other people's things. Pledge to other campaigns. Because guess what? When you launch your campaign, your profile shows how many other campaigns you've backed. It doesn't tell how much money. You, you could have given $5 to each one, but it'll say, hey, they've backed 10 other campaigns. Be a participant. Because what's Jen, Jen saying is such a big turnoff. You don't even click like on my photos and you're sending me a message for money. Mm -mm -mm. Right. And I will tell you, I remember everybody who who has been around comedy no matter what. And the people who only appear when I have a project to cast. I know you. I know oh, who you yes. are. Yeah. Don't be that person. Yeah. Uh, but I would love to say, Tim and Linnea, let's ask you. I want to ask you this. So you sent your 100 emails. Did yes. anybody die? No, no, right? Not that I know. Did anybody At least reply I didn't kill you anybody. telling you to f off or never email them again? Honestly, no. no. The worst thing <laughs> that happened is they just didn't respond. That's the worst. That's literally go. the worst thing that happened. That's yeah, it. there, there were you no go. explosions. But to, that's um, what my to, my motto has been for people all year. We've been mentoring filmmakers and actors, and I'm like, does anybody die from the word no? I mean, maybe it's just a doctor telling you no, but yeah. no one's going to die if you send an email. So I just want everybody to be brave and, you know, and be brave and just believe in yourself. But I think getting a team, as Lynn can tell you, don't do it alone. 
No. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, I would love for just one last parting thought that maybe is in your brain or that you haven't <laughs> said. Um, I, whoever feels like they have something can go first. Otherwise, I can pick oh, on yeah. you. Um, Tim, what, what comes up? So Tim, I think what I was going to say is that um, recently I was reached out to on Twitter by a young uh, queer woman who lives in Belfast, who lives in Northern Ireland. And she had emailed me during the campaign of Demon Hunter, just saying she was excited about just the prospect of it. And I, and we had like a little exchange, but this was in 2019. So to be honest with you, I forgot about it. And then she emailed or she messaged me on Twitter a couple of days ago and uh, hi, Mary Rita, if you're watching this. And she um, said that she was so inspired by that project that she actually is crowdfunding a web series that she is filming about young queer people just coming into their own university in Northern Ireland. And she's like, I'm not asking you to donate. I just wanted to let you know that you are such an inspiration. So of course, of course I donated. Donate. <laughs> yeah, because you know, email. Yeah, who who wouldn't you know want to want to help a project? I inspired you. Yeah, I know. Oh, just take my money. Take my, here's my credit card. But and that's um, actually another point I wanted to make up for yeah. filmmakers is you you will create lifelong fans. Like we have yeah. people who we crowdfunded for Beethoven that not only donated, uh, that not only showed up to be background then after that for scenes because we didn't have enough money, who then also showed up for festivals, who then also bought our movie. Like you'll mm -hmm. create this. It's, it's a lifelong thing. It's not just a beginning thing. So nurture those relationships. Be thankful. Everybody who emails you, need. everybody who pledges gets a personal email. And then mm -hmm. they, get to keep, like Leah said, you keep them updated. You keep being grateful constantly. Um, Linnea, do you have any final thought that's come to you? Um, I would just like to say that because of this experience, people that I didn't know who came across the campaign reached out to me and I've had amazing conversations. I've been able to go on platforms like this to talk about my experience, which is leading to other things and people are coming to me. So I don't, I don't know what it is at this point where the direction is taking me, but not along the lines of what Leah is doing, but definitely I want to be able to help other filmmakers along in this process um, because of my experience. And I, and I want them to know that you are not alone because I felt alone in a sense of, I didn't have that team, but I did have Leah. So I, 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 I think I have a calling somewhere because I, I've been talking to people. I don't know what it is yet, but mm -hmm. you guys, you know, I'm, I'm here with you guys. So probably when I get off the call, it'll be some more juices flowing about what that will be to help other filmmakers and what that looks Love like. That. Yeah. And our goddess, our, our, our drill sergeant. Um, <laughs> I love that. The friendliest drill sergeant. <laughs> friendliest drill sergeant. <laughs> what, what can we, I know we've said a lot, but if there's anything you feel like we might've missed or any <sighs> part you know, we, we have said a lot and you just touched on which um, the, these both of these filmmakers will attest to one of the things that I drill the most is gratitude. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. I use a technique that I call the five tiers of gratitude and my clients have a system they have to follow. I have a chart. I have all the names we mark off and systematically twice a day. They need to do thank yous on Facebook, thank yous on Twitter. We do thank yous on the campaign update page. We send thank you direct. So if you've pledged to one of my client's campaigns, you got a personal thank you note after your pledge. You got shouted out on every team maker's Facebook page. If you have a Twitter handle, we shout it down over there. And then you also got mentioned in a list in the campaign update. So you feel you feel thanked, appreciated, seen, you know, you did the pledge right and you feel a part of the team. You're more likely to pledge again at the end. You're all in it, all in it with this team. And it's something I see lacking in so many campaigns out there. I just gave you 20 bucks. Did, I, did it work? Did you get it? I don't know what's going on. So that I think is the thing I drill into my clients the most is gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. I love that. I think it's a great place to end. And I'm very grateful that you guys were here with me today. And um, those those who are actively talking, uh, people are watching shyly, but those who are talking, thank you for being a part of this uh, the conversation as well. And I'm glad that you guys got something from this. Uh, stick around because we are going to give away a seat of DaVinci Resolve and share the pick of the month film for March. But Leah, Tim, and Linnea, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Uh,